Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Myself Nikita Gupta. Today we are going to bring an amazing speaker with whom I have worked while I was in Uber. He used to work in the same team. He's an amazing recruiter and he's coming from a lot of recruitment background with a lot of experience in big tech companies. So if you are looking to get a job, you are a job seeker, listen to his advice because he's the one who can get you hired and get you your next dream job. But before that, subscribe to the channel, like, comment and share because I'm going to bring in a lot and lot of advice around your job search and doing this channel, actually I can help you to land your dream job. So please go and subscribe to it. Um, hi Mitch, welcome to my channel. Thanks a lot for coming on my channel. Um, how are you doing today? I'm good. It is a uh, exciting Friday. So very happy to be here. Thank you. Thanks a lot for coming. I think this podcast is going to be an amazing podcast where we would be loving to hear from your insights, especially on the recruitment side. Being a recruiter yourself, we would love to know a lot of tips and tricks around job search. And obviously, I have a lot of questions also from candidates, which I get asked. So I would love to throw at you as well. So we would love mm -hmm. to start of with course. your background. Uh, like if you can share a little bit more about yourself. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, so I'm a technical sourcer in the recruiting world, uh, currently at Uber, but I've also worked at big other companies like Meta, um, obviously now Uber, worked at Sustainable Talent before this. So I'm about like three and a half, almost going on to four years of, you know, being within this sourcing world. So I would say I'm still relatively new, but also experienced at the same time, but have a good career um, to look forward to at the same time. So. Awesome. That's that's great. Uh, so everyone, whoever is listening to today's podcast, we have an amazing recruiter. Uh, yes, you heard it right, recruiter. And if you have any questions after listening to this podcast, there is a comment section. Please add it. We are more than happy to answer them. And also do connect with Mitch via LinkedIn because I'm pretty sure Uber is hiring. So moving ahead, I would love to know a little bit more about how tech recruitment actually work as a tech recruiter. Like, how do you actually search for candidates? What is your day to day responsibilities? Mm -hmm. Because I, it, it's very interesting because I get these questions a lot of times that when we are on the other side of the table, people actually, like especially the job seeker, would like to know that as a recruiter, how we see their profile, how we are reaching out to them and how we are shortlisting them. Yeah, so I can kind of dive right into tech sourcing and kind of what I do, what I look for day to day, all of that stuff. So I guess first off, I can kind of start with what we do and like how it, the process even begins, if that makes sense. Yeah. So usually it starts off by, you know, the business obviously needing candidates or a certain role to be filled. So for example, I know I mainly have been working in the mobile space, specifically on like iOS engineers. So usually what will happen is the business will come to us and say, hey, you know, we're looking for, you know, this iOS engineer uh, for this team. It's a product team or, you know, it's, you know, they give us more details on like what type of work they'll be doing. Then I'll talk with like the hiring manager and ask them more details on like the team, sure, you know, what they're looking for in their team, and then really start to source candidates based off of that. Mm -hmm. So usually once I get all of those, you know, nitty gritty details down, that's when I, you know, then start actually sourcing and doing the, um, more labor intensive work of our role where, you know, we're sourcing through multiple different ways, whether it be LinkedIn or people that have um, applied through, you know, Uber's career site or the company's career site. And then we'll also go through like Google searches, like there's tons of different ways to find great talent out there. Mm -hmm. So I would say that's kind of like what we do on the beginning level. And then obviously, you know, once we start finding the talent that we're looking for, then we start to reach out and really like start to connect with these um, hopefully future candidates and then get them in the process, get them through the interview and we help them along the way. So whether it be like prepping them or connecting them with like hiring managers to talk to and learn more about the company, like that's really our job to just like stick by the candidate um, through the entire process and make sure that they are uh, comfortable, but also like very set with the um process of moving forward so uh hopefully that kind of answers it and for the like day-to-day -day, what was the other question that you had as well 
yeah so uh, we would also love to know a little bit more about like what are the different platforms or like uh, ways you actually reach out to the candidates on day to day basis because mm-hmm. a lot of candidates have this mindset that recruiters generally reach out directly through linkedin so we would love to know like mm-hmm. if you use only linkedin or, or are you using also other platforms as well yeah that's a good question so i would say for most of my career i've been a huge LinkedIn fan. I think people go to LinkedIn when they're kind of like building their profile and resume about like their past jobs. And a lot of people on LinkedIn are, you know, looking for future opportunities. So I think LinkedIn is definitely the biggest platform that I like to use. And I I think there's so many good qualifying, you know, talent out there on LinkedIn that I never really run out of talent to you know reach out to there's always a ton i know other people do like to use other platforms i know a bunch of companies uh pay for these smaller platforms i want to say it's like there's ones called like diamond and stuff i've never personally used those most of the time i will uh, my top talent from like linkedin or you know the, the career site on any of the companies that i'm currently working with i would say i mainly use those two and those have led me to great success yep. so yeah, I would say those are the main platforms. Got it. Perfect. No, thanks a lot, uh, Mitch, for sharing uh, those valuable platforms. But you did actually emphasize a lot on LinkedIn because, I mean, being a recruiter myself yes. and I have also been like a strong advocate of using LinkedIn. So I would love to know a little bit more if you can share like the importance of LinkedIn in a life of a job seeker. And then as a recruiter, how you actually use LinkedIn in terms of finding mm-hmm. a candidate because a lot of times job seekers, I've seen 99% of the times when a job seeker reach out to me uh, for a job opportunity, they have not updated their LinkedIn profile. So as a recruiter, like if you can actually emphasize a little bit more about the importance of LinkedIn and why they should update it and how, that would be great. Yeah, so I definitely think it's important to stay updated on LinkedIn, mainly because, you know, there's always sourcers or recruiters looking for talent. And, you know, let's say that your recent job that you're working at is really connecting with what we're looking for. That's why it's important to stay updated, because if you don't have that, then we may not find, you know, your profile, because the way it works on LinkedIn is we have certain like search strings. So like basically to kind of generalize it i'm allowed to go to linkedin site you know we have a recruiter profile there and we're able to like put in some keywords and it could be as simple as like you know when i'm looking for ios candidates i could just put in ios but if i'm looking for you know maybe someone who's working on a specific platform like our maps platform i can put things in like gps telemetry like specific keywords and then it'll pull candidates that have these profiles that have the word, you know, GPS or navigation and iOS. So Mm -hmm. I think that's why it's very important because let's say this person that we are looking for for this role hasn't updated their LinkedIn and their last project or their last main, you know, job was working specifically on GPS stuff, but they only have, you know, the years before that where they weren't working on it, that profile would never like pull up, Mm -hmm. right? Because it doesn't have that word with you know what i'm searching for so i think that's why but i've also had candidates who you know don't they update it in a way where they'll just do like company and their Mm -hmm. um their job title so those are a little bit more where you know you kind of have to go and dig a little bit more for uh which can pop up less so i think that's why it's important to stay updated when you're like looking specifically Mm -hmm. um for other roles out there but But yeah, so yeah. I would say that's probably the importance is just to give you, you know, more opportunity as well as us finding you a great opportunity. So it kind of works hand in hand with one another. Awesome. No, I think this was perfect advice. And for viewers who are actually listening to this podcast, um, I think I everyone knows that I am also the founder of Career Flow. We actually have a free Chrome extension tool, especially for LinkedIn. So whatever the Mitch has actually recommended, we have utilized that and we have added all the insights and the feedback that how you can update your LinkedIn profile from top to bottom. So go and check out. I am going to add it in the description link. And on top of it, update your LinkedIn profile today because you never know tomorrow a recruiter like Mitch is going to reach out to you. So it's like a great opportunity for you to kind of go and update and get interview calls. But thanks a lot, Mitch, again, for sharing those valuable advice. I think one common question, which I get a lot uh, as a recruiter myself is like, if someone is having 
like no experience or you can say zero experience then in those scenarios how a candidate should like portray their profile or they should work on their profile because a lot of times when they're looking for a job uh, like recruiters they say that recruiters don't reach out to them so what is your advice to those mm -hmm. candidates whose experience is not there or not like they've not started working in a company yeah no that's a great question and i think this one can also be a little bit more challenging but usually what i've seen and i've seen like success with it is let's say you don't have much experience so you know the profiles that i'm looking for may not like your profile wouldn't pull up right mm -hmm. um instead usually what i always suggest is like hey go look at like a couple companies um just look at their employment or their employers i should say and look for technical sourcers specifically you can look for recruiters as well but usually for bigger companies i like to say like look for technical sourcers because they're the ones that are really pulling these profiles and bringing them to hiring managers so look for you know someone like myself who has technical sourcer at you know whatever company i'm at and then reach out to me with your resume say like hey i'm you know just finishing school I saw that Uber has posted, you know, some internships or this, you know, level one engineering or whatever you're looking for. And then we can go from there because usually what happens is as a sourcer, I have the inside scoop of what roles are hiring and I can look specifically like at the role that you gave me. So I'll see like, hey, they said that they're looking for this. They gave me the career site link. I just go plug that into my internal site. I see that the role is hiring. I then talk to the hiring manager and like, hey, you know, I have someone who reached out to me. Would you be interested? And then right then and there, you're through the process. So usually that's what I um, suggest. And I see that works the most. And I would do that with like a couple different, you know, companies, but also different sourcers within the same company because a lot of sourcers will work on different projects so you never know if someone is on the tech side versus like non-tech side and if you're going for a tech side um role then it's very important to find someone on the tech side who has that uh inside scoop on kind of like what we're looking for so usually that's what i suggest um if you're just not getting a lot of um people reaching out yeah. to you no i think i'm also like 100 uh, percent aligned to what mitch mentioned referrals work a lot let it goes a long way and as mitch said go on check on linkedin go on check on career website and find out the relevant sources recruiters and send them a message personalized message please don't like just send mm -hmm. out hi hello because i am pretty sure mitch i think you you will agree that uh, from morning to evening you might get messages like hi mitch hello mitch and can you get me a job so please don't send those yeah. type of messages because that's not going to help you but try to make your personalized message try to do your own research try to go through the company website try to go through the job description and then personalize and send it to the to the source or recruiter and it will make your job easy and the other side of the table like mitch's job easy to actually send you to the relevant person or to the relevant job opportunity i think there's one piece of it which kind of uh, i would also love to touch is about the projects because I personally think mm -hmm. that even when I was looking for internships or a new grad opportunities when I was graduating in my master's or undergrad, uh, projects are one thing which is like very important and crucial. So I would love to know from your end, like if you can share a little bit more about how projects are so important because a lot of times people actually don't value them a lot and they don't understand that even though we don't have an experience, but we can add projects and that can actually mm -hmm. make our resume, our profile look much better. Yeah, so I think projects, it can really depend on the role you're going for and like the requirements, of course, that like these companies are looking for. But I think projects are super important to highlight on a resume just because it adds more depth and value to kind of like what you're working on. And so we can get an understanding of kind of like your skills and everything as well. So I think like, for example, projects are really good when you're kind of getting your foot into the door because you don't have this experience, right? So it's like yeah. these internships are looking for certain qualities still, and these projects can really highlight that uh, within, you know, a candidate. And then same mm -hmm. with even senior candidates. Like I've seen people mm -hmm. who ha come from like still really good companies, but maybe their mm -hmm. work isn't directly correlated to with what I'm looking for. However, they worked on a project that is working specifically with what I'm looking for, right? Or like maybe they did their freelancing on, you know, a project that uh, directly correlates to something that, you know, one of the skill sets that I need. So I think like projects really help kind of elevate your resume and just yeah. make it more apparent to 
kind of what we're looking for. And it just gives me more insight. So if anything, it's like really helping me out as well. So I always appreciate having projects on there. Yeah, no, that, that, that's perfect. And I think like for everyone, whoever is listening to this podcast, I think it's like a request from my end as well. Like, please make sure that you don't undervalue yourself, even if you don't have an experience. There are companies out who are still hiring people like you. You just have to make sure that your resume, your profile stands out. You are adding everything, whatever you are doing, whether it's your personal projects, your academic projects, or even your freelancing work, or even small, small things people do in their life and they don't consider them to be added. But make sure that you value yourself and portray them in the right way in your profile. So coming back to the resume and LinkedIn, uh, do you want to give any tips around like specifically because I'm pretty sure you are seeing more than 50 to 100 resumes per day basis as a recruiter yourself. So what is something which you would like to give as your suggestion as a recruiter who sees so many profiles and talk to so many mm-hmm. job seekers on day to day basis? Yeah, I think uh, when it comes to like resumes and when I'm looking at resumes, a lot of times, you know, let's say I'm looking at engineering resumes. A lot of the recruiters or sourcers don't truly understand the like very little details of, you know, what you're actually doing in your work. So I think it's important to keep it very um, Mm -hmm. simple, but also the ability to allow others to understand it outside of Mm -hmm. just, you know, your stakeholders and stuff and your other engineering um, Mm -hmm. colleagues. So I think it's important to kind of understand that. And if like you can you know, even talk Mm -hmm. about like your resume and get, let's say, a non-technical person to understand the tech side. I think that's like very important and it only like Mm -hmm. makes it that much better and more apparent to us as well. So I think that's kind of one of the tips is I would um, focus on making the resume Mm -hmm. easy Mm -hmm. or allow all people to kind of like understand what you're working on, but also highlight the importance of the projects to like, you know, I worked on this project and this was the outcome of it, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think that's also important as well to highlight in resumes and they don't have to be Mm -hmm. like super in depth. You know, if you just Mm -hmm. put, you know, your main bullet points and then when we get on the phone, you can really elaborate. I think that's how Mm -hmm. we sourcers see it anyway is like, Hey, we're all already interested in your uh, profile based on the resume and stuff uh, or your past experiences now we can kind of like deep dive into what you really did so mm-hmm. I think that's really helpful and just like keeping resumes simple at the same time because the last thing I want to do is read a 12 page resume right but when someone <laughs> passes me a resume and it's like you know two pages it's like this is great this is perfect so it's a it's a yeah. lot easier to digest I should say no I think that makes sense and uh, I mean I understand what you are telling because as a recruiter uh, if you are sending us like like so long resumes no one has a time and I think it's a research which is available on Google that within 10 seconds 6 to 10 seconds a recruiter actually make a decision to pass the resume to the next level or to put it into the bin like to reject it so within that time period short time period I should say or negligible time period you have to impress the person and like you need to quantify I am a strong advocate of quantifying your resumes and as Mitch also said that even if you are adding your projects even if you are adding your internships whatever you are adding make sure you're showing the impact and impact can only be seen by adding the numbers so whatever you're doing make sure that you're putting in the right way and it's coming in the right format because that's going to attract within few seconds and recruiter can actually put you to the next step of the interview process otherwise you will never get an interview call Next thing which I would love to know from your end is like a lot of candidates actually come from the mindset that they need to have like a degree to get a job in a company like Uber. Uh, So I would like to know like have you ever hired someone who is coming from like not having a degree like coming in from self-study, boot camp or even Mm -hmm. like going through courses um, like maybe Udami courses Coursera. So have you ever done that and is it easy for someone to not go and learn through a degree and just like even get a job in a company like Uber? Mm-hmm. That's a great question. I think I've had a couple people, you know, get offers and stuff that didn't have mm-hmm. a degree coming from mm-hmm. their background. So I think depends on the company that's hiring because I I know some companies that are like, you know, if, you, if they don't have a degree, it's automatically yeah. out. So I think mm-hmm. that can be a challenge on its own. Mm-hmm. But I would say a lot of companies are also turning um, the other mm-hmm. way and saying like, hey, you know, mm-hmm. if you don't have your degree, it's okay. Uh, we just, you know, 
we'll do a couple more like coding interviews, right? A little bit differently to kind of make sure that we have the same grasp on things. And I know mm -hmm. like Tesla was doing that when I, I want to say it was like a year ago where uh, Elon Musk said like, hey, for our engineers, we don't need degrees anymore, but like they're doing extra technical interviews. Mm -hmm. um, obviously that's not happening uh, where <laughs> I'm at. It's, yes. you know, it's more of like, as long as you have the experience that we're looking for mm -hmm. and we are meeting the requirements, then we can definitely get you through the door. I would say, you know, boot camps are super helpful. I've even seen like people just work on like freelance projects and, you know, they did a startup basically out of it and it worked really well, mm -hmm. but now they're just looking for the corporate world again. And they get, they got so much experience from it because they really worked on the project from like their own idea all the way to the deployment phase and just like rolling it out, um, kind of keeping it alive. So I think like that experience in itself is also super helpful. Um, yep. so I would say it just, it kind of depends. <laughs> it really depends mm -hmm. on, you know, the, yep the employer mm -hmm. and what their requirements are first and then going from there. But I think yeah. one thing is that usually if let's say you don't have a degree and you really just learned everything on your own, yeah. I would say that usually I emphasize to just make sure you study for the interviews and the technical mm -hmm. rounds and then, you know, you'll be good. But I feel like if you put in the time and effort, then you just, you have, just as much of a possibility to get in as someone who has a, you know, bachelor's or master's. So as long as nice. like you're putting in the work, you know, you'll see the outcome. Awesome. No, I think this kind of advice is really, really important for people who are like not looking to go for a higher studies or for a degree and still looking to work for a company like Uber. Uh, my next question, I think, is like something which I have been asked a lot from last six months. I was working as a recruiter and people started reaching out to me for job opportunities. So in your case, like, would you like to suggest something because layoffs, recession hit the market and before that COVID was mm -hmm. there. So in this market, when companies are doing crazy layoffs, like 10,000 layoffs in one day, 20,000 layoffs in one day, as a recruiter, what is your suggestion to the job seekers? Because you know that every, how everyone is feeling and how uncertain in the market is like 500 candidates applying for the same role and candidates not getting yeah. interview calls or even job offers so what is your suggestion as a recruiter um, in terms of to these job seekers yeah i think right now is like definitely a tougher time for a lot of people i do mm -hmm. think that like you know we'll go back up so don't worry too much don't stress about it too much but i would say just like start going on linkedin you know maybe one to two hours a day and just like there's still a lot of companies hiring. I still see yeah. it, you know, every day I get emails from LinkedIn saying like, Hey, these 10 companies are looking for, you know, whatever job it is. So I, I think like, mm -hmm. it's still important to just scour LinkedIn, uh, still keep applying, but also there's a lot of times that, you know, these people from higher companies like meta or these tech companies, mm -hmm. our are getting layoffs. But they mm -hmm. also have a lot of people reaching out to them from past recruiting roles or opportunities. So, like, it's really important to also keep these recruiters kind of like in the back of your pocket. Like, just because you're not interested at this time doesn't mean you'll be in, not interested, like, in a job later. Right. So I've had like a lot of people mm -hmm. like, hey, from Meta specifically, when they had the layoffs, they're like, hey, Mitch, I know you reached out to me a year ago. Um, I wasn't interested at the time, but maybe now is a better time to look forward for new roles. Um, yep. And I think that's important because now it's like, hey, I probably wouldn't have reached back out to this person because they've already told me no a couple of times. But now they're mm -hmm. reaching out to me and like I have a job for them, like I can get them in the process and through the process within a, you know, a matter of weeks. So I think it's important yep. to kind of just keep connections growing. And I think that's where like mm -hmm. the LinkedIn platform is just super helpful because it's really about, you know, these mm -hmm. connections, but also, like I said, just like keep scouring LinkedIn. There's always going to be opportunities somewhere. Startups are still mm -hmm. like surviving right through these. Um, and they're going to be looking for this talent as well. So just keep, keep your head up. <laughs> no, I think, uh, this was the point which you said that there are still companies hiring. So like, this is like the perfect advice I can also give and resonate hundred percent that don't first of all just keep on focusing on the companies who are not hiring don't just tuck with the part of no i need a job in amazon i need a job in google i need a job in meta mm -hmm. because right now the companies these companies are not hiring they are doing slow hiring or maybe they are on a hiring freeze so mm -hmm. rather than keep on focusing on those companies let's start focusing on the companies which are hiring and as mitch said try to take leverage of the companies 
make a list of them keep on reaching out to recruiters hiring managers start like sending them messages start te- checking out the job descriptions or the roles they are still hiring and in w- within few weeks i think you will be able to get your dream job but thanks a lot mitch i think that was the perfect advice we mm-hmm. can give uh, awesome. to the job seekers currently last but not least uh, do you want to give any like motivational words because i know that very less recruiters come and share their advice so coming directly from someone who is hiring and work for all the big tech companies i would love to know like any last words you would like to give to the job seekers yeah i would say just keep your head up especially at this time i know sometimes even i get worried but i know things will go up and you know you'll definitely get to that company i say always just keep trying um even if like let's say you're wanting a tech company in the future i say like look at startups too because a lot of these tech you know uh candidates end up at startups because that's where they have like massive impact um and then like you know the the opportunities will always grow so i think mm-hmm. you know wherever you land it'll always be yeah. exciting and you'll continue your adventures to the next company right and you'll just continue to learn i think that's what's important so i would say you know keep your head up during this time so that would yeah. be my closing yeah. words and uh connect with me on linkedin and you know maybe i sure. could find you a role <laughs> No, definitely. I will be adding all the links of Mitch's profile in the description. So feel free to connect with him. And as I said in the starting as well, Uber is still hiring. So please do reach out to him. Send them. Send him a proper message before reaching out to him. Research the company. Find out the roles and customize your message and reach out in the right way. But feel free to connect with him. He's an awesome sourcer. And thanks a lot, Mitch, for coming on the channel and for sharing your advice because this podcast is going to help so many job seekers on the people who are. actually looking for an advice from someone who is internally working in the company so thanks a lot again for coming on the channel no problem nikita thanks for inviting me